Hello friends, welcome back. I am Rajneesh and today in this episode we are going to have our first lab on global file system version 2. So what all things are we going to do? First of all, if you need to mount a global file system, you need to make sure that you have the module which is GFS2 which should be loaded in the kernel because it's not loaded by default it's a dynamic module that you are required to be loaded you can use mode probe to load it secondly we are going to create a global file system and we'll understand how to mount it after that we'll be expanding the global file system we'll be enabling quota on it we'll enable data journaling in it adding journal in case we are getting one more node into the cluster we'll have to add journal to it so we are going to understand that part and additionally we'll try to understand access control lists also so coming on to the lab here is the scenario that we have already created okay so here are the two nodes node 10 and node 11 I am uh, not concerned about the Lucy where is it yeah I'm not concerned about it because this is basically a user interface so let's go to the terminal open a connection with node 10 run the command clu stat to understand what is the status of cluster so the cluster is up and the clustered service is now running on my uh, sorry clustered service my web cluster is now running on node 11 what's the status of node 10 it's the local and it's online and resource group manager is running on it let me create one more session with node 11 okay so first of all what we are going to do is we have the logical volumes LV cluster that we created in our last session that's present and is visible to both the nodes we need to make sure that CLVMD is running on both fine now coming on to the global file system so here you can see that module GFS is not loaded okay so you can load it using the command mode probe GFS2 and here you see module G uh, module GFS2 has been loaded and it's used by distributed lock management we do the same here now the second part is before you start working on global file system you should make sure that your service if you don't want to start it before that bef let's configure a partition format it with a global file system so what we are going to use is the partition dev mapper or dev vg cluster lv cluster so as we already have discussed in the last session of clvm how to create a clustered lvm a logical volume so i'm not going to repeat that part now in this part what we are going to do is we are going to use the command or we are going to format it with a global file system mkfs dot gfs2 is the command that can be used to format any partition with the global file system we know that this is a shared 
volume group that is shared by all nodes in the cluster and the physical volumes that are used and that are a part of VG cluster belong to this particular one IET or uh, this is the part or the shared disk that we have accessed from the LUN which is from a shared storage so yeah this disk is accessible to node 10 as well as node 11 and using these disks we have the accessibility to the volume groups as well as logical volumes so let's start with the formatting minus minus help okay minus H is the thing that we have to use so the basic and the most important part that we are going to use in this is mkfs dot gfs2 is the command you can specify the file system block size size of quota change file if you want to enable debugging help size of the journals if you want you can specify or you can let it default minus J this is an important argument that we have to provide it now depending upon the numbers of nodes in a cluster we should have at least the number of journals that should at least be equal to the number of nodes in that cluster right now we have on only two nodes in the cluster so we can keep it two later on when a new nodes come into the cluster we can add one more journal to it so that can be done dynamically don't try to discard unused blocks don't ask for any information so not required the other important thing is the name of the locking protocol that is required to be used when we are creating this global file system so the locking protocol that we are going to use is lock underscore distributed lock management resource group size we don't require the name of the lock table this is again an important part because the name the format of the name of the lock table is such that it identifies the name of the cluster as well as the name of that file system so the name of the cluster is going to be unique and all the nodes in the same cluster will belong to the same cluster okay example if we talk about our cluster the name of our cluster is my cluster that's it disconnected okay so in our case the name of the cluster is my cluster so what we are going to do is the name of the lock table is going to be the name of your cluster and then after colon it will be the name of the file system my GFS2 we can say that or it could be any name you can specify it as your web cluster or any but this name should be unique okay let's talk about it node 10 and node 11 both belong to the same cluster my cluster now these nodes in the same cluster may have more than one file systems or more than one global file systems that they access so every global file system that we are going to create for this cluster should have a different name they are going to have the same name for cluster but the name for the file system is going to be different for this we can keep it as web cluster other it could be DNS or a anything but the name should be different for every global file system so dev VG cluster LV cluster now it says 
it's going to destroy all the data in this logical volume LV cluster. Are you sure you want to proceed? And I say yes. Now it is going to take a few seconds and going to get it formatted and will provide us the details. In the meantime, if you want, we can configure etcfs tab so that dev mapper, sorry, dev vg cluster, lv cluster, it will be mounted under the folder, let's say gfs2 or you can specify any folder the type of file system is going to be GFS2 let's give it the defaults options FSCK should not run on it okay so after it is completed it says the device is created the block size is 4k which is default the device size is this one and the file system size is 0.6 gigs so uh, the size was around 600 megs the number of journals that I specified it took as 2 resource groups is 3 locking protocol that we are using is distributed lock management and lock table name is cluster colon my GFS2 so these are the details if you want to make use of UUID you can make use of that so Let's add an entry in etcfs tab so that it gets mounted. I already added it to node 10. GFS2 defaults 00, 0 so that is fine. And I added it to node 11 also. Now this entry is present on both the nodes. Now I am going to restart GFS service and I'm going to switch it on and after I switch it on sorry DF minus H I can see that GFS2 file system is now mounted okay coming on to this server I cannot yet see that GFS Two is mounted. Let me make sure that the folder GFS2 is available. It's available in case it's not there, you'll be required to create it. I think on node 11 while testing, I already created that. So, slash etc init.d GFS2 restart or chk config. GFS2 on and here I see that this file system is now mounted under the folder GFS2 that I specified in EDCFS tab. Now coming on to the folder GFS2 the entry in EDCFS tab makes sure that this file system should be mounted or should be available after every reboot moving on to node 10 and node 11 if I see the files there is no such file I am going to create a file in it with a node 11 if I see ls minus l so file a is created on it so it simply says you are mounting the same global file system in more than one nodes in the cluster in read write mode so here we see that node 11 is running a web cluster I am going to reboot it and my services are going to get relocated to node 10 I just reboot node 11 so it is going to what command I gave was CLU stat minus I1 after how many 
seconds should it be refreshed so here you see node 10 is now starting the service and the service is now relocated to node 10 in the meantime node 11 is in the process of getting rebooted you can see the status here and after the reboot of this machine or the this node of the cluster you will see that the global file system is mounted so with this reboot I just wanted to show that even after the reboot of a node of a cluster the global file system will be mounted because we have entered its details in etc fs tab and secondly the service gfs2 has been switched on using chk config so it's about to be up ssh is not yet started So it's almost done and here I see that the global file system is now mounted and is available after every reboot of a node of a cluster so what happens is even after the node 10 reboots it will have the global file system mounted on it where is it GFS2 it will be mounted under GFS2 so what objectives can we attain out of it first thing is in case we are using a load balanced cluster the file system should be mounted on more than one nodes they should be sharing the same document route and that should be mounted anytime on all the nodes in the load balanced cluster so it will be very useful in that scenario okay so one part is done it's available after the reboot the second part that I would like to show you is what in case uh, okay what all commands can I run on this file system or this global file system one is GFS to convert this command can be used to convert a global file system from version 1 to version 2 we already are running or we already have formatted our file system on GFS2 so we don't need it but if you have your file system on GFS you can make use of GFS2 dash convert and then the device name like dev VG cluster LV cluster and before that make sure that the file system is unmounted so here is the process it displays back up your entire file system first run fsck to ensure that the file system is fine make sure that the file system is not mounted from any node and make sure that you have the latest software versions so we cannot run gfs to convert right now on it because it's already using GFS version 2 what all other commands can be run GFS to edit okay we'll see about it later on but right now our objective is to add one more journal so let's add it GFS J add minus H and it says minus J the number of journals that I have to add to that file system and then the path to the file system okay dev vg cluster lv cluster we have not specified the number of journals that we are adding we are adding one journal to it so 
after this command is run and completed you should be able to see three journals corresponding to this global file system and finally it is going to allow you to get it mounted on three nodes and after that you can add one more node to the cluster and you can just provide it uh, get it mounted on that file uh, on that node 12 so here the old number of journals was 3 and right now the number of journals have been increased to 3 so it's increased from 2 to 3 finally now we have the option that we can mount this file system in node 12 or a new node that we add to the cluster okay so journal addition is done okay coming on to GFS2 dash grow now if we see to the size of the file system of global file system or LV cluster right now the size is 600 max we are going to increase the size to 700 max let's see what the process is so first of all make sure that you have some space in the volume group and we can see that there is around 1 gigs of free space available in VG cluster so LV extend minus L plus 100 max to this LV cluster now if we see LVS the size of the LV cluster has now been increased to 700 max but if you see to DF minus H it still says 600 max because the file system corresponding to LV cluster is not yet expanded the size of LV cluster has been extended but you need to tell this global file system that we need to expand the size of our file system to cover 700 megs now the same as what we do is uh, do in ext3 with resize to fs so here we are going to use gfs gfs2 grow minus h so it says the path to the file system dev VG cluster and LV cluster and now if we type the command DF minus H it's not yet grown error the device has grown by less than one resource group the device grew by 100 max one resource group is 200 max so the size should be at least more by 100 uh, 200 max so what I am going to do is I am going to increase or extend the logical volume by next 100 max so finally the size of the logical volume is now 100 ma 800 max which is 600 plus 200 and 200 max is more than one resource group so it comes out to be now if we grow this global file system here we can see that the size has now grown the file system grew by 200 max DF minus H now says that the size of the global file system is now 800 max so this is how we increase the size of global file system the other approach could be first you are right now we have some free space in volume group if it's not there you may have to create one more physical volume you add that to volume group and after that you extend the size of logical volume and finally you grow the global file system okay we have added journal we have grown the file system now let's talk about the quota to get the quota implemented on the global file system it provides you an option 
for quota it provides you three options one is quota equal to on other is quota equal to off and quota equal to account quota equal to off means says uh, means it's not going to take care of quota accounting it will take an accounting of quota which user or which group is making use of how much quota but quota will not be enforced on users and groups if you keep quota equal to on it says quota will be enforced on users and groups so we'll add option okay in etcfs tab we are going to add one more option for it after defaults which is quota equal to on on both the nodes now quota is enforced on both the, both of them after the reboot but what about the current status not yet so mount minus o remount says remount it and cat proc file systems grep gfs2 uh sorry cat mm, proc mounts grep gfs2 and here you see that it's now mounted with quota equal to on same what we do here mount minus o of if you want to confirm before remount proc mounts grep gfs2 so slash gfs2 quota is now off which is by default so mount minus o remount slash gfs2 and here we see that quota is now implemented on it now in case we are authenticating both of these nodes against ldap they would have the same set of users with the same IDs as we have already discussed in our LDAP scenario but in this system I have not yet configured LDAP so let's create two users or one user will be sufficient user add rcval okay so added user over here you need to make sure that the ID corresponding to the user is same here ID UID GID is 500 and the same is here so works fine it's the same kind of scenario as LDAP in which you have the same user ID in all the environments so okay let's enforce quota on this user rcval gfs2 dash quota minus h now here you see a few set of options that you can add to it list will list the quota corresponding to all the file systems if you see GFS2 quota list need a file system to work on GFS2 so okay let's uh, the file system to work on is to be specified with minus F we'll see that list list whole quota file sync by default the quota is synced between the different nodes in a cluster in every 60 seconds uh, 
if you want to enforce it in any instance of time you can use GFS2 quota sync to get it synced get get quota values for an ID limit okay two kind of quotas can be implemented one is soft quota and other is hard soft limit or in other words there is one option which says warning after you have crossed the limit of 100 max you will be warned that your quota is about to expire you can set a limit which is a hard limit to 500 max so after 500 max you will not be able to write on the file system check to check the quota file whether it's corrupted or not in it initialize the quota file and reset reset the quota file minus B size in file system blocks minus F the file system to work on minus G get set group ID print size are in KB that the sizes that we are specifying are in KB minus L the new limit or warn value so let's start with it GFS2 quota limit minus L or okay the new limit or warn value so it's going to be 1024 uh, in K so it comes out to be 1024 zero zero which comes out to be around 100 max or you can specify in megabytes directly fine in megabytes the limit is 1024 so we are limiting we are limiting it to 100 max which file system GFS2 uh, okay sorry I'm missing the user ID or group ID so minus U can be used UID is going to be 500 for user RCVAL so here you set your limit or the minus L stands for the limit value and limit says it was the hard limit you can set one value which should be less than it and we set it to 50 megs and let me see GFS2 quota list minus F slash GFS2 and here you see the limits for the user RCVAL it says warning at 50 megs and the hard limit is 100 megs so let me become okay let me confirm whether the details have been synced to node 11 yes he has a visibility to it now let me become user RCVAL and let me try to create a file of around 60 megs if equal to dev0 of equal to slash gfs2 slash test 60 megs bs equal to 1024k which is going to be 1m and count goes to 60 permission denied okay we can add it to some group for example let's say we are adding a group okay group needs to be available on both the nodes so we can do it in the live environment but right now let's 
provide write access to user RC wall. Okay, so set FACL minus U RC wall read write and execute slash GFS two. Sorry, it's minus M. Operation not supported because if we are talking about a folder which is okay, what's this folder? This folder is actually using global file system. If we need to implement ACLs, we need to go to FS tab and we need to say it that we are going to make use of ACLs write and quit mount minus o remount gfs2 let me try to implement acls now so there is an option that we can add in etcfs tab that is acl so it provides us addition additional features of extended ACLs which say in case for example if you are talking about the folder GFS now this has multiple owners of this folder one is RCVAL here you see that user RCVAL is provided read write access to it and by default the owner is root owner is root so extended attributes have been added and user rcval now has read access to uh, read as well as write access to it we can see it with get facl i cannot see it because it doesn't yet support acls on node 11 i go to etc fs tab after quota equal to on i add acl And now if I run the command get FACL or get the extended ACLs on this folder it says user RCVAL has read write access to this folder fine and finally this user this folder has two owners one is root which is the default owner we have added one more owner RCVAL which has read write executable access to this folder okay now coming on to su minus rcval becoming the user rcval and now try to create a file of around 60 megs okay let me try to create it for more than 100 megs And here, if we see to the size of file, minus H for human readable, it says the size of the file is 100 max. But we tried to create a file which is which should be around 160 megs so here we can see the message also the disk quota exceeded so this user cannot create a file that is more than 100 megs in size so this is how the quota works on global file system and the same quota details are visible to all the nodes if I see to the status of GFS2 quota minus U or minus F slash GFS2 okay you cannot yet see the details okay let me see it over here in node 10 
okay GFS2 quota minus H you need to specify the file system to work on okay what I ne need to do is I need to list the details of quota from it and here I see corresponding to user Arcival the value presently is 100 megs so he has reached to his limit his warning was 50 and 100 is the limit if you see the same details in node 11 because the same details are synced and here you see the same details on all the nodes in the same cluster so this is how your quota works in a global file system let me see if I'm missing something so what we have understood is GFS2 file system has been created we have mounted it we have expanded global file system we have enabled quota on it we have okay we are left with data journaling and journal has been added dynamically ACL we have done by addition of the parameter that was uh, set FACL and mounting it with the option ACL okay so we are left with one part which is data journaling so if we want to enable data journaling on any of the folder inside it for example slash GFS2 MKDIR it could be any folder let's say J1 if you want to set journaling to it or data journaling to it go to CHATTR man page and you will see there is an option which is J plus J it's not there let's just search for J then here is an option that you can see here is an option that you can see J says add data journaling to it you have some more attributes that you can add to it immutable file cannot be modified it can only be appended there are certain more options so if we are concerned about data journaling what we are going to do is CHATTR plus J slash GFS2 uh, so what it says is under the folder GFS2 and all files and folders inside it the data journaling has been enabled okay uh, LSATTR one moment let me just confirm CHATTR plus J to add journaling to some folder for example J1 and LSATTR if we see here the option J is present it means data journaling is enabled on it if you want to enable it on a file you can do it like this uh, CHATTR plus J for that file and here you see that journaling has been enabled to these files and folders so this is how we enable data journaling on the files or folders so yeah this is the first lab for global file system let me know if you have any concern about the video thanks for viewing the video have a great day